this is Wes Fryer. It is the 17th, yes, of January 2022, and I'm here in my backyard, doggone it. It is 63 degrees on January 17th. Who's ever heard of that? Anyway, I am uh, going to clean my grill racks, one of the things that uh, Santa brought me this year that I, full disclosure, I actually bought for myself, uh, was some grill cleaner. Um, I've got a Rectech RT700 Bull grill, and man, for the, I don't know, first like six or eight months that I had this thing, I just pretty much meticulously cleaned the grates after every cook. Um, what I found is it's a little overkill, but now my grates are looking pretty bad and I've actually cooked some chicken and some stuff. My, what I do, well, let me show you the, the grate. I'm gonna flip this camera around. All right, so pellet grills, of course, have uh, the heat shield down there below and it's great to use foil. So I'll pull that up. So all that, you know, black is, is gonna be nice and, you know, shiny foil here in just a little bit. Um, but the actual grates themselves, um, I'm ready to just get them super clean. So according to the instructions, what I'm gonna do is put these things in this plastic bag that came, came with, and I'm going to uh, pour this entire jar in there and let these soak uh, and let them set over eight hours. And then tomorrow we'll come out here and check this out and see um, how this works. And then we'll just wash, supposedly just gonna wash this off with, with soapy water and we're gonna be, you know, as good as gold. We'll see if this is gonna work. All right, so I got to do is get these grill grates off and into the bag without puncturing the bag and leave them here for a while. So, like I said, the first, like, it was at least six months, I don't know, for a long time, I was just being meticulous cleaning these things. And I think, I think I probably need to get back to not basically being as lazy and kind of clean them better. I need a new grill brush too. Um, we just cook on this thing all the time. Like we're talking almost every day. We're probably cooking on it at least, at least four times a week. So that's awesome. Using the heck out of it, but it does take a toll. So, all right. I'm just gonna take this is I got this off Amazon. Uh, I'll put a link to it in the in the uh, des description of the video. Carbona two in one oven rack drill cleaner. Three easy steps. Bag it, soak it, rinse it. Okay. I kind of thought this would be something that I'd be able to do multiple times, but it's not like a single use deal. So alright. There we go. So we dump that in now. Try seal this up. Nice and sealed. And now all right. Well, I'm gonna lay this over here inside and then we're gonna come back tomorrow and get this thing. See, see, see if it works. Might as well do that. So I'm gonna go ahead and take this off and set it over here on my table and we'll get this thing switched out. Um, I probably need to go ahead and not too long from now and go ahead and vacuum out. So you get you know quite a bit of dust that builds up. And I mean, some people are really meticulous about wanting to get a ton of it out. What, what you definitely want to do, and this is a good day to do this, is get into your firebox and you want to take out the ash um, that builds up in there because that can uh, reduce the, um, you've got your igniter that's down in there that ignites your fire, your, uh, your pellets. Um, and I mean, I've read that like, especially in the winter or whatever, I mean, that the ash actually works as insulation. My uh, shop back stop working. I have like a super cheap one. So I need to get it and I can't repair it. So I need to get a new shop back. Um, you should leave some pellets down there in the bottom of your firebox when you, when you clean that out. Um, it doesn't have to be a ton, but I'm going to go ahead and grab 
basically just a regular handful, not a huge handful, just a regular handful, and just uh, dump those in there. Um, so I'm gonna put this, I guess, is that the heat shield and the other's the deflector plate? I think that's the deflector plate and the big one is the heat shield. Anyway, you don't have to come in here and get that cleaned out as far as, you know, all of the ash and stuff like that, just constantly, but it certainly is good um, to do periodically. It looks like I need some more pellets because I am pretty, pretty depleted there. Okay, let's come over here. It's a very professional video shot. All right, so... I think I actually did two cooks. Normally I'll just replace the foil after every cook. And I think I actually did a couple things. And my last thing was like a beer can chicken. So it's got a little nasty and normal. But see, isn't that wonderful? Look at that. Foil is great. So um, I still, you know, I've still got some discoloration and stuff like that on this. But basically, man, that foil, foil takes care of everything. So I like to buy at Costco the um, the really wide 18 inch uh, foil. Uh, you can use heavy duty or you can use regular, but I like to get this wide stuff. And what I have found works well measuring is basically to just go a little bit more than the length of the um, heat deflector or whatever. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to want to leave about an inch here on the end. And what I like to do is fold it up here on this side like so, fold it all the way across like that. And then I'm going to come down. You know how well you can see this side of the fold. Here, let me move this here. Let's see this better. Perhaps. All right. So I've got this folded up to this edge. What you don't want is to have the foil on either side, anywhere really, um, like, you know, sticking out and blocking stuff. Because the heat, you know, on this thing comes up all over the edges and, you know, you just, you want to cover all the metal, but you don't want your foil sticking out. Okay, so I make that flush when I, when I fold that up, come down here and fold it up. And then I'm going to need to fold down. And so I just basically like fold down from the top and, and then take the edge. So the, the extra that I have here is just folded down here at this lip, okay? And down here, um, I've got enough. Take out a little bit. I'm just gonna fold that over and tuck it under, under the lip, okay? And then I do the same thing over here. and fold that down, okay? So, that's what I do. Put the camera back over here, and put this back on. Smoke. Now, ready to seat this right side down the drip pan, and then I kind of hold it up and set it down and pull it back, and then make sure I'm seated on there snug. Okay, and then I'm ready for my grill, my grill grates to uh, go back on there. Um, another thing that I'm going to clean periodically is my um, thermometer, uh, the built-in that's right here. I need to go ahead and clean that, and that's kind of dirty. So, anyway, um, there are, I'm sure, many people that are keeping their grills even cleaner. And maybe you want to default to, you know, cleaner and spend more time, but... Definitely keeping this grill clean and scrubbing those those grates. I mean, I love the fact that these are stainless steel grates and, you know, I, I get steel wool out and scrub these things. And, you know, it's not terrible, um, but it is, you know, one of the more cumbersome parts of maintaining the grill. So I'm excited to see how this grill rack cleaner is going to do. I don't think I'm going to be doing this, you know, certainly not every week, maybe not even every month. But I don't know. We're good. I'm excited to give it a try. So we'll check back tomorrow. Uh, we're going to let these things go for pretty much 12 hours, um, and then I'll see how, how it looks.
awesome. Um, so I would recommend huh, throwing away your sponge after you, you know, get this thing clean because that, that sponge is trash. And it was definitely nice to have this metal, um, whatever this is, ball of, <laughs> of uh, steel wool, uh, uh, a metal um, wash. That's not a rag. What is this? Sponge. <clears throat> Usually when I am um, washing up my grates in the past, um, these are like a dollar at Walmart. Um, you can get, you know, Brillo pads or whatever, different kinds. These are just little soap pads that have steel wool. But man, let me tell you, it takes a ton of elbow grease to get all that stuff off and leaving that overnight. Everything just wiped right off, just like it said. So yeah, here I am doing an infomercial for this product because woohoo, that was that was fantastic. So let me get these thrown back on the grill. We'll take a look at it. And uh, I got to cook some Brussels sprouts tonight. So I got to put those on. And yeah, we're not doing salmon tonight. We'll do salmon tomorrow. <clears throat> we got to get these things ready to go. All right, so here we are, 24 hours later. And we... Uh, look at that! We got a grill that's looking like new. Woohoo! I'm so excited. I love my Rectech RT700. It's awesome. And great to take care of it. So... Who knows? Maybe I'll do this once a month, certainly once every few months. Good stuff.